Hey cybersecurity people, um, this video is going over what you do for the lesson part before the actual project starts in 213. So if you look at 213, a lot of this is kind of like learning and refreshing your brain on some stuff like um, what a router does, connecting two networks, um, what router can connect to the internet with a, with a server. Even better, if you're going to go to the internet, you should probably have a firewall to block certain attacks and vulnerabilities. So when you're going through this practice or intro to material, you can fill out the vocabulary. Um, you do want to go back to activity 121 to refresh your brain on all the different types of things in topography, in a network topography. So you got to go back to 121, right? Not I know these numbers get confusing, but it's all the way back here in firewalls and malware where it talks about what a simple local area network is. You're going to describe that like in a sentence, what switched topology looks like. Basically, you're refreshing your brain on all these ones um, because you're going to build this for bikes, boards, and beyond. So, you know, go back, write your own description of what each one of these does. Um, and then in 213, it has a network with a firewall. So it's basically kind of the best version of it right there. So give a brief description of those and you'll be fine. Um, so if you remember to our last lesson, 212, when we were doing the who is and the trace route and all that stuff, um, we were messing around with Amazon and every time we looked at Amazon and we're clicking on the different network settings, you know, we opened up developer tools with the three dots and looked at network and saw how many pages loaded. Um, every time we saw a different IP address, it was a different server. So Amazon has a ridiculous amount of servers. Um, so this is a sample of what Amazon's setup can look like. These dot dot dots mean there's tons of servers that actually do this. So for here, um, we noticed some things you tried to look up with who is you couldn't because they protected like their product information and their uh, customer information and stuff like that uh, by not having it connected to the internet. So you'll see some things are connected to the internet, some things are not. So on this first one, you're going to double click on this screen and you're going to drag all this stuff onto this picture. And this is for Amazon. So like firewalls are there to protect you, right? So you'll want a firewall to protect your web servers so the internet, you know, can't directly access them. They at least can filter out some of the internet. You know, people can get on the web servers. I should probably call these. How do I know these are the web servers? Um, basically, they're the only part that's connected directly to the internet. So Amazon.com, I don't know why there's an R there. Um, so these are the web servers and they connect directly to the internet. See how it's like just web server. There's a firewall to protect them a little but then it goes to the router and right to the internet. There's certain things you don't want to get directly to the internet. That would be like, you know, your product servers. You don't want, Amazon doesn't want people to be able to actually access and um, mess with their images. So there's their one link removed. They don't connect directly to the internet. They go through this router, which goes through this router and then connects to the internet. So they would also want a firewall protecting them. Okay, now I guess you could put a firewall on each. Maybe they do that too, but you at least want this one. So they're one step removed. It doesn't, the public can't get right to these. They have to go too many places. The public can get right to these. And so some of these servers will be on products. Some of these servers will be on media. And you have to decide which router would be considered an internal router and which one would be considered an external router. When you're all done placing that stuff, you hit save and close and it'll save it there. And then you can answer the questions. Um, 
what servers are directly connected to the internet. You know, that would be your web servers. Um, that's so they can access the web pages. Um, your passive analysis did not uncover Amazon's customer employee data. Why do you think that is? Um, they protected the customer and employee data behind um, internal routers and firewalls. So not public facing. Um, where do you think customer information or information for Amazon customers would be stored? You know, probably on some, they would have servers, a database servers for customers, customer info. Um, where would employee information be stored? They'd have another server for just like employee. So this looks like, you know, I don't want you to think that this is all of Amazon server categories. Like they have images, They'll have some for like videos, they'll have some for, you know, their, um, their own uh, people. So they'll have customer servers and employee servers and stuff like that. All of those should be on the internal network, um, not public facing. So you got to think about this when you're setting up your servers, you're like, how am I actually going to run these wires. I need a router that separates. I need to put up firewalls here. These guys have to connect exactly. So you'll finish this up. Um, and then it says, this is important because this will set up your ability to do the project, which really starts kind of after number eight. Um, I think this should be eight really. Review the information in the table you made for bike sports and beyond. So you did this in, um, in 211 in your notes or I just typed it in here. So remember when we were doing the CIA triad, um, you're supposed to you know, move those dots around and fill out this table. You have a checklist just like this. So you, know, you think like product catalog, who's allowed to view it? Employees are, doesn't need to be encrypted. Customers are allowed to view it, doesn't need to be encrypted because you'd need to be able to see the products in the catalog. Um, who's allowed to modify it? So these are our confidentiality things. Are we allowed to view it and is it encrypted or not? Integrity is who's allowed to modify it. You don't want customers to be able to modify your product catalog. Employees, yes. And um, how available is the product catalog? That needs to be really available because customers should be able to order at any time. So they should be able to see the products that are in the catalog. So basically you want to make sure your stuff is, you figured out this pretty well, um, because that is going to set up everything you do for the next part. So, um, which things need to be confidential, you know, think about what you want to protect. You want to protect, we talked about this in class a little bit. You want to protect, um, like employee information, customer information. Um, think about what should be encrypted and what shouldn't. If you don't want people to be able to access it, and even if they do access it, you want to protect it, you want to encrypt it. So be careful about that. Um, you don't want to have their addresses or personal information or anything like that, customer information too. So what should be more confidential? Customer information. Um, employee information, right? Um, probably order with customer. You probably have your order information too. Um, which one should be integrity? Uh, think of all the things you want to be accurate, right? Integrity means not a lot of people can modify it, right? And what things should have high availability? So you're like, which should be available? Your product catalog. Um, probably not. Oh, your customers should be able to change their info. Yeah, that should be available. Like 
they need to put in their address and email stuff. Employees need to be able to look up what or what they ordered. Website. So basically, employee information needs to be not available. So you'll go through here and say, okay, your product catalog. Um, your order information. Um, so you're kind of going through here and connecting the dots to here which ones need to be have high availability. Um, the website. Oops. Right. Um, and integrity is all the stuff you you want to control who's able to change it. Right. So product catalog you want to have pretty high integrity because you don't want just anyone to be able to do it. Customer information, that should be accurate too. Most of these I think you'd want to be pretty accurate. So just fill that out and then uh, this should help you. All this work you're putting in here will help you on the next part. All right, there's your helpful video. I'll, I'll have a different one for the actual project part in the submission doc. All right, later people.